is Miranda and today I am here to wrap up 2021 with my annual tradition of giving you all my favorite ships of the year. This year, oh boy, there were a lot of new faves, a lot of <laughs> fave ships from last year that were really struggling to function this season if I can say so and yeah it made the list very interesting. I always love looking back at like the end of a year and looking at the ship list I compiled. All the ships that I love so much that I didn't even know existed at the start of the year. I think that's really fun to see and it makes it real exciting just to see you know even at the start of the year like what am who am I gonna fall in love with next year and who do I not even know is out there yet <laughs> right now just waiting for me to ship them and it's really exciting so yeah this year was really interesting ship year wise right I feel like there was a lot of ups and downs but ultimately these ships are definitely the ones that won my heart so coming in at number 10 I have a somewhat controversial one I guess because not a lot of people like them but the people that do like them like them and I'm in the ship with them and that is Sylvie and Loki from the Loki series. I just think their chemistry is really good and I love them both as individual characters and I love how their relationship brings up so many ideas of self-love and of the idea of free will versus order and how they kind of are the same right like meant to be Lokis but they're on Ex opposite sides of this conflict of like should the world be free to make the choices and terrible things happen and there's fighting and stuff like that but it's your choice or should it be order but you don't have a choice and you don't have a choice when those bad things are the ones that happen to you like that's a world where Lokis don't exist and it's interesting because I feel like their relationship is definitely one that represents that dynamic very well and represents I mean like what it means to be a Loki and how they learn together that it doesn't mean you lose, it doesn't mean you're just a pawn for like someone else's bigger story. Like I just think the whole story in general is really interesting and their relationship I think really served to highlight that idea very very well. And yeah I'm excited to see what's gonna happen in season two. I feel like even if they don't end up together I won't be like super disappointed. I just think it's a very interesting dynamic you know in general so it's just interesting to watch. Then coming in at number nine is Kay and Evan Kelp from the Dimension 20 season Misfits and Magic or Magic and Misfits I always get it backwards but they I love them. I love them so much and I love Erica Ishii and I love Brennan and leave it to them to make this adorably awkward nerdy couple. It is initially Kay who is obsessed with fan fiction and all things Hot Topic-esque, you know, like those outfits and those boys that like people who shop at Hot Topic just fawn over. Evan is basically Kylo Ren but doesn't want to be Kylo Ren so it's kind of like the man of their dreams but they start to realize that, you know, there's more to just like online stuff and like people are like actual complex people and not just like ideals that you put upon them and characteristics that you assign them based on what they look like or what they remind you of and just their whole relationship is really really sweet throughout the whole progression of it and then they also did an update in the Christmas special which was really really cute too and they're just so supportive of each other and everything they do and I think it's so adorable to see them like hype each other up whether it's like standing up to the bullies or you know just being able to express their emotions accurately like it's just really cute and really sweet and I am always a sucker for romances in D&D &D, and I think they did a really really good one in a quick amount of time too. Then coming in at number eight is Heather and Ray from Panic. Panic unfortunately got canceled so there will not be a season two so we won't know more about these lovely people but I am a sucker for <laughs> the enemies to lovers obviously and boy from the wrong side of the tracks and girl from I don't want to say like perfect princess because she was definitely not like the rich aspect I think you think of but like she had the good grades she did what she was told stuff like that so I feel like it's like on paper they're so different but then I love that like they were kind of the only two that could really understand and relate to each other and why they wanted to participate in Panic and what they wanted out of the game and his whole speech guys at the end that um her friend shows her when he was like she is a girl with wings and I'm nothing but dead weight and that's not good for a girl with wings <sighs> it absolutely sends me and now that there's not a season two I can just live in my headcans of like they get married eventually and she's his sugar mama and like they just live happily ever after with the sister and I'm perfectly content with that happening I think it's so cute like all the scenes 
him obviously running in to save her in the fire, but her saving herself. It's just, it's so cute, guys. And I will cherish the moments we do have since there will not be a season two. But I think they're really cute and they're really sweet. And it's a really good job of doing it where it's like that guy's not a super big ass. Like, he's an asshole. But it's not like to the point where you're like, why would this sweet girl be with this asshole guy? Like, it's like explained it better and he's not a total dick completely. Like, there's, there's reasoning behind it that I like. Coming in at number seven is a crew of people because I couldn't really rank them. Like, I just felt like it was unfair because they're all at different stages technically in their relationships in the TV show. But since I've read the books, I know that we're all going to end up as a couple eventually. <laughs> it's just that they're at different stages right now. So it's my Six of Crows gang from Shadow and Bone. So I've got Mal and Alina, Kaz and Inej, and Matthias and... Matthias, Matthias, I always say it wrong, but him and Nina. They're all at different stages, like I said. I was really, really excited to see Kaz and Inej and Matthias and Nina since the Six of Crows is the book I read and those were like relationships that I loved and they did such a good job. Particularly like Nina's and Matthias's is like definitely more developed already than Kaz and Inej, but I mean, if you're a Kaz and Inej fan, like you know it's a slow burn and I think they're doing a really good job of showing that and showing the chemistry. And then Mal and Alina, I never actually read Shannon Bone oops so I didn't know too much but I know I knew more people liked her with the darkling but I knew that she ended up with Mal in the books I'm pretty sure and I knew that Mal like my friend had run it and Mal was like Mal's not the guy <laughs> like he's kind of dickish and I think they knew that like my friend and I have a joke that like to make him able to compete with literal Ben Barnes like you have to make him the perfect guy and take out all the asshole tendencies of him so they did that and I think he's so sweet and I love the bet I've become like Listen, I'm always going to be a sucker for enemies to lovers, but the older I get, <laughs> the more sentimental I get. And I think the best friends to lovers just gets me in a way that I think is so, so sweet. Like just someone that you would do anything for and you trust completely and it's been there all day. And then one day you look over and you realize like you're my person. I think that's just so, so sweet. And all he did to get her back and to really just listen to her and didn't ask questions, didn't really demand answers like just wanted her safe it's just it's beautiful guys I love them so much and I I really am glad that they made him much better because I think it's a th all the chemistry between all of these guys is amazing but Mal and Lena's is just ugh, I love it so much coming in at number six this literally seems like ages ago but believe it or not it was 2021 <laughs> is Tiffany and Max from Scom France it has been for freaking ever since this season has premiered and I really was not impressed when they announced that it was going to be a tip season I was just like really seriously but I was completely completely wrong because Tiffany's season was amazing and I kind of from the first episode was like oh that would be cute if her and Max were together not thinking anything would ever come of it and then to have a whole season about them and about their relationship and how it helped Tiffany heal and become more comfortable with who she really is it was beautiful. I love them so much. Coming in at number five, speaking of supportive relationships, is Naomi and Ethan from the book The Intimacy Experiment. I read the first book, The Roommate, and it was it was pretty good. I liked it, but it wasn't my absolute fave. And I think Josh and I can't even think of the girl's name, but they weren't my favorite relationship. But Naomi and Ethan really said, hold my purse, girl. I'm coming to save you. This relationship was beautiful. I love how open and communicative they are. And I just love that like when they have a conflict, they talk it out and they're both kind of bad about talking it out. Like that's kind of not their first thing. And they work together with that to be like, you know, like this is how we're feeling. And it's just like, I love seeing the romance books take a turn in that like, they're no longer having that like weird third act breakup as much or just like misunderstandings because these characters are like, no, we're going to talk things through. And I think that's a really more healthy thing to see. And they're just obviously they're so hot first of all <laughs> and second of all it's just really nice to see them support each other and not make them the best versions of themselves but encourage the other person to make the best you know like I'm not gonna fix you but I'll hold your hand while you fix yourself and I think that's really that's really sweet and really nice and it was just really really cute and I'm excited to see what else the author has in store for writing because I love this. Number four is Ishik and Sinan from Love 101. Guys, I was really, really nervous when season two was announced as like the last season and just the last season in general because we know that these guys drifted apart. Something happened and I don't want to spoil exactly what happens, 
but I was pleasantly surprised with the ending and I think it made a lot of sense for all the growth we had seen between them in particular and the whole season I mean Ishik wasn't really a big part because like she got kicked out of school <laughs> so I feel like she was always on her own but just to see Sinan how much he fought for her and how much he helped her with trying to get her back into school and like that being like the main plot of the show was to get her back in school so so cute guys and they will always they will always have a special place in my heart and it was nice sending off for a really really nice couple in my opinion number three is of course nancy and ace from nancy drew if you know anything about me you know how much i freaking love this couple oh my gosh the slow burn is amazing we left it up on such a big cliffhanger this year and i really hope we get a kiss by the end of season three or some kind of confession something anything just to sustain what hopefully will be a wait till season four they still haven't gotten officially renewed yet but i just think again talk about a couple that just understands each other at a finite level friends to lovers i feel like he is kind of the only person that can really read Nancy really well and doesn't demand things from her or ask questions when she's not ready but is honestly like fine with being like you know talk to me when you're ready I'm here and I think that's just oh, it's just so cute their chemistry is amazing and I can't wait to see what happens next year with it fingers crossed coming in at number two is Gina and EJ from High School Musical the musical the series this was a show I had honestly no interest in and then my brother wanted to watch it and I was like sure bro I'll watch it with you. Season 1 wasn't great in my opinion but season 2 I feel like picked up in a big big way by just kind of moving away from High School Musical and making it their own thing and one of the most surprising things to come out of season 2 for me was Gina and EJ. I again think this is another like the theme of this is friends to lovers because they were enemies then they were kind of best friends and then they fell for each other and it was just so realistic I feel like for a high school relationship especially of just like that kind of unsureness of like I don't want to wreck my friendship stuff like that I don't know if they like me and it was just really cute to see how they grew and how they started to open up to each other more keep each other in check with their um not so nice tendencies and really grew from that and support each other and I'm so excited I hope we get to see a kiss in season three or some kind of cute date and we just leave Ricky behind like I don't want them worrying about Ricky at all and I just want them to be their happy supportive selves so yeah we'll see and then coming in at number one my most like liked is that a word or just like the couple that made me the happiest and literally almost made me do a cartwheel when I found out they were canon is Pilar and Felix from Love Victor. Guys, this was like my crack ship after season one. They had like one, maybe two scenes together. There was like one episode where they got coffee together because they were both like being stood up by people. And I was like, wait, I kind of like this. And I feel like I've talked about so many tropes that I love, but my, the one that always gets, always gets me is when someone falls in love with their brother's best friend, which is this, or their best friend's brother. So when I saw them kind of flirting and they're, they're appropriate age-wise, I was like, guys, I want this grumpy little girl to be with this sunshine of a boy. And I really like how they did their relationship. I feel like they didn't rush it. And I feel like they made them be close friends first, which is kind of what we saw going into the season one scenes that they did have where they were like, you know, like if you need someone to get coffee together, like I can be that person. And I think that was really sweet. And just everything that Felix was going through, how Pilar was the one that was so supportive and he could talk to and she wouldn't judge i even love the thing when he's like really depressed and he's like i'm not like the best company to be around and she's like well you know people happen to say that like i'm not the best you know like i'm not super funny or happy all the time either and they just got to hang out and i mean that whole confession scene was amazing i love pilar and i'm so proud of her for kind of being like you know like i we can't be friends like you know like it's just it's too hurtful for me to just watch you be with Lake and like just knowing how I feel like right now we can't be friends and that like woke his ass up and was like no I want to be with Pilar I want to have the first date with Pilar and all the awkwardness and I'm really excited to see more of them like that was like don't get me wrong I want to see who Victor went to if it was Benji <laughs> or not at the end of season two but like season three like I really wanted just to be able to see like them on dates and them being cute together and then like I just think it's gonna be so cute Victor finding out like all that stuff I think will be really cute because even if he's cool with it I feel like he's not gonna be cool with him like making out right in front of him or anything so there's just so much you could do with it and I'm so so excited so yeah those are my favorite tips of 2021 there were so many that I didn't include on the list because I just want to narrow it down to 10 and you know not make this a 30 
hour video but there's so many ships that I love and I'm sure there are ships that you love so please please leave your top ships down below in the comments I love hearing them and sharing them and again seeing like where these ships are gonna go in the next year so I can't even imagine what's gonna happen so yeah thank you guys all so much for watching all my videos this year and liking and commenting subscribing it was such an awesome year and I always have fun doing videos and sharing my thoughts on things with you guys and hearing your reactions and theories to things pointing out things I didn't notice theories I didn't come up with and it's just super fun so thank you guys so much I hope you have an awesome new year and I will see you guys next year bye <laughs>